Some congressmen are willing to send our troops into battle no matter who the opposition is, even if it means going head to head with Russia and starting World War III. During an interview on MSNBC, Senator John McCain told host Andrea Mitchell he regrets that there is no military option for America in the Ukraine crisis. Here is the exchange he had with Mitchell. So we have no military obligation here to defend Ukraine. Uh, and do you no, think there is a military option, even if we had an I'd, obligation? <clears throat> I'd love to tell you that there is, Andrea, but frankly, I do not, I do not see it. I'm glad to see our, our U.S. military pre naval presence in, in, the, in the Black Sea. Um, I, again, I wish that there were, but uh, I think that these sanctions can really have a serious effect on the kleptocrats who are the, <coughs> the oligarchs and kleptocrats that are part and parcel of the power structure of Vladimir Putin um, and those other measures that I told you about. Um, I'd probably have some military exercises <coughs> with the Baltic countries who are parts of NATO. I'd accelerate, uh, as I mentioned, membership in the NATO, NATO for Moldova and Georgia, but I, I, I do not see a military op option and it's tragic. The senator feels that the lack of a military option is tragic and then he said the applications for NATO membership could be expedited to check Vladimir Putin and that the U.S. should take steps to conduct military exercises in the Baltics. McCain, a Vietnam veteran, is an avid proponent of military action. In 2012, the lawmaker called on the Obama administration to conduct airstrikes in Syria. Even when he does not support military action, the senator is still a hawk. In 2010, McCain called for regime change in North Korea, stating that China could bring the North Korean economy to its knees. McCain predicted Putin will not leave the Crimea, even if a referendum indicates residents there would rather be part of the Ukraine. He told the press, I promise you Vladimir Putin will not be thrown out of Crimea because of a vote. McCain said he will work to impose sanctions on Russia over the crisis, and in addition, bank accounts and travel to the United States may be restricted. Until the crisis is resolved, John McCain will continue to fight Vladimir Putin over Russian actions in the region and revive the Cold War feud. But the bigger question is who is looking out for the people of Arizona while McCain is trying to start World War III? Ukraine is going to need a long-term military assistance program from the United States equipment both lethal and non-lethal. I see that Ukraine has been invaded. Russia is massing forces on the border, provoking unrest, threatening to annex part of this sovereign nation, and possibly worse. When free peoples and patriots, victims of aggression, wish to defend themselves and their homes from further aggression, and when they ask for some modest means that, they, that can help them resist, I believe we should provide it not to provide, not to offer false hope or to harbor it ourselves, but simply it's the right and decent thing to do. It would come as a surprise. The secure communication system transmitting to the Ohio-class U.S. submarine fleet would be the first to receive the command, patrolling both the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. They are undetected. Fourteen of the 18 warships are equipped with 24 Trident missiles each, Trident 1s and Trident 2s. The remaining four are armed with 154 Tomahawk cruise missiles, which can be outfitted with nuclear warheads. 
The fleet as a whole represents half of the United States' strategic thermonuclear capability. A single Trident II missile is equipped with up to eight nuclear warheads aboard a multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicle, or MIRV. A single W-88 warhead delivers the equivalent of 475 kilotons of TNT. In the case of a full deployment, the United States could unleash over 400 such missiles with between six and eight warheads each. From the time of launch, it can take less than 10 minutes for an SLBM to reach its target, or as little as five minutes if it is flown on a depressed trajectory. This allows a very short margin for reaction. Early warning radar systems in Russia, China, and elsewhere immediately detect the missile plume. They can determine the trajectory and intended target of the missiles. Minutes fracture into seconds. This is not a test. This is not scheduled. Russian nuclear command and control systems carried over from the Soviet era leave little time to opt out or delay a full-fledged response. Within 50 seconds, the missile has peaked above the Earth's atmosphere. It reaches its top speed. The engine drops off. The bus releases multiple warheads as well as decoys. The radar systems on the ground are overwhelmed and unable to differentiate the two when they are in post-boost phase. Re-entering the atmosphere, the decoys burn off and the warheads enter their terminal phase. It will be less than 180 seconds before they touch down.
that goes off in full in the first shot. Now you have in the submarines, you have the warheads you have not yet discharged. Those go along the way as a second wave. After that, you're pretty much out of weapons. After which, most everybody is dead. Most logistical systems are dead, non-functional. You have a situation where the effect of this kind of firing creates a continuing effect which may go for several years. Now, instead of having one bomb, which is a, a really it's a, it's a nuclear super bomb with thermonuclear implications. Now, imagine you have the same kind of thing, or less, and you have not one big bomb, you have a whole barrage of such things. The exchange involves Russia, it involves China, which has a very significant thermonuclear arsenal. It implicitly involves India, it involves the United States, it involves the extermination virtually of Western Europe. And this is what Obama represents. It's what he's intended. This is the end of civilization. You're looking at World War Three, and nothing less than that. In the period of late 2011, U.S. President Barack Obama inaugurated a Pacific Century, or a Pacific Pivot, which expands U.S. military presence in the naval theaters of the Pacific and Indian Oceans. This expansion has been seen as an attempt to contain China and erode its regional sovereignty by building up a presence in bordering territories. Barack Obama's rebalance to the Pacific includes plans that would take effect over the coming years to station four littoral combat ships in Singapore, to obtain increased U.S. access to the Australian naval base at Perth, and increased troop levels at Darwin to 2,500 troops. There are also plans to expand troops in South Korea to 28,500, to expand troop presence in Guam, the Philippines, Japan, and to maintain the forward deployment of U.S. aircraft carriers in that theater. China has responded to increased U.S. presence in the Pacific with the Area Denial Anti-Access Strategy, Chinese military measures to keep adversaries out of strategic territory bordering their country, in particular the East China Sea. In addition, the Pacific strategy also includes a missile defense shield which would be on the soil of South Korea, Japan, and Australia, targeting Asia and the Middle East. As a response to what was seen as an Asia-Pacific arms race, Chinese press indicated that to improve its security, China would upgrade its nuclear weapon capability. They would also develop offensive nuclear-powered submarines with ballistic missile capabilities sufficient to break the interception capability of the U.S. missile defense system. In the spring of 2012, there was further warning that an overarching missile defense system would force China to change its long-held nuclear policy that China would revisit its policy of no first use and, if threatened, would consider an offensive nuclear strike. We've begun a review that will identify our most important strategic interests and guide our defense priorities and spending over the coming decade. So here's what this region must know. As we end today's wars, I have directed my national security team to make our presence and mission in the Asia-Pacific a top 
priority. As a result, reductions in U.S. defense spending will not, I repeat, will not come at the expense of the Asia-Pacific. My guidance is clear. As we plan and budget for the future, we will allocate the resources necessary to maintain our strong military presence in this region. Today, the American people have chosen Barack Obama, who at the earliest phase of his presidency was already moving the apparatus into place that could and would trigger a worldwide nuclear holocaust. Obama, on his part, is clinically insane. His state of mind, as manifest, is that of a clinically insane person. And it's a clinical insanity of the Nero type. So therefore, he is in, in a mood and on a road toward his own self-annihilation whether as a personality or even more drastic measures. That is coming. This man is a type who is capable of suicide. This may be the first clear suicide case in the U.S. presidency. He's in the direction of getting there. Whether he actually gets there, the fact remains, he's now developing rapidly in that direction. If ever there were a time to launch an attack, it would be now, in these coming months. <laughs> 